So I want to share with you this case because first of all I think it's really nice image quality first of all and this is from um, my practice in Bern and to go through a couple of things where I had a little bit of a discussion with myself actually. So going through this case I think it was just chronic knee pain or recurrent knee pain no mention of a, like a specific trauma or a more recent trauma. So let's go through the case together and see what I came up with. So to start with the knee, always middle compartment first. So we can see the meniscus is normal. We don't see any uh, tears and we can also use the sagittals here. Nice root, nice and crisp. And then we can already see there is bone meridema here at the middle border of the tibia. Here very focal, only in the epiphysis, no problem with the physis itself and the medial collateral ligament is okay, the overlaying soft tissues, pes and tendons are fine, no baker cysts. So that's basically the assessment of the medial compartment. The reason for the bone meridema, we can see maybe there's some trabecular infractions here on the T1 sequence here, it's not normal, so potentially it's either a stress-related reaction from overusing, or maybe there was a trauma that maybe the patient don't know, or kind of like a like jumping or something, so that's likely just a mechanical thing here. Um, this overlying edema, which is very subtle here, I did not mention uh, in the report. This might just be some, I don't know what this is, could be some funny subcutaneous thing, maybe there was a contusion, maybe this is a little bit of a fat necrosis, I don't know, but I thought this was too small to really bring it up in the report. Moving to the lateral compartment again, meniscus, is fine, we can check on two planes, ideally. No tear, cartilage is fine, no bone meridema. And the pobletus tendon is fine, the lateral collateral ligament is fine, proximal tibia fibula joint is fine, the tibial band is fine. The only little bit is a little bit of edema here, which I was not um, calling at first. Then on a second thought, I thought, okay, maybe there is something going on. Um, so I put it in as a potentially a mild edema but it's not a faux lesion we don't see anything on the other side and sometimes we just have a little bit of a higher signal here also the feces itself when we look at the feces some areas show a little bit more signal but generally speaking it's quite okay so i think it becomes now very not advanced but very uh, hard to pin this down to a specific pathology. I think this we can still accept as normal if it's an active person, maybe there are some irregularities, but it's not yet like a, a real problem. I thought in this case also I don't have the information whether it's an athlete or anything like that who is really overusing. Then we have the, but this is on the middle side of things, typical do not touch lesion, cortical desmoid or distal femoral cortical irregularity without any clinical, uh, clinical implications. Sometimes can be painful. So this is something that um, uh, we put in the report, just in case there is some pain there, potentially can be painful, but it's not something they need to be worried about. Okay, then the central compartment, we can see the ACL is a bit higher in signal than we, we would expect in a young patient. So maybe there was something going on in the past, some form of a subacute or chronic sprain that the patient had at some point although we don't see any other sequel of that. Then we have the PCL, which is fine. We can better see this on the sagittal. And then we have the synovial plica, or the medial synovial PCL fold here, protruding a little bit into the joint, but this is not pathologic here in this case. Cartilage adjacent is fine. You can see this is a little bit of fat tissue and synovial lining and thick, maybe a little bit of thickening or beginning fibrosis here, which protrudes into the joint space. And I have a separate YouTube video about that, but Normally I don't mention these unless there are some associated cartilage defects or it looks a bit funny. Then the patellofemoral joint, we have no cartilage defects, no joint diffusion. The retinacular are okay. The extensor tendons are all okay. Here, this is a bit of a blurriness to it. Could be blacker. This is just the normal changes we see in most people. And so the question is here, should we call something here? But I, I didn't, I think it's probably just an averaging from these normal higher signal areas here. But this again, if the pain would be anterior knee pain and there would be a marker on it, maybe would cause some form of a little bit of an irritation. I would not go with tendinosis in such a young kid yet. Um, so I didn't mention this to be honest. Um, 
the half of that pad is also okay, just a normal edema along the in the plica or intrapatellar plica, which can be normal or most often is asymptomatic, and we don't see any rupture or tear of the of the plica insertion in the intercondylar region. Okay, so that's really uh, the case. I hope you like this going through a case like this. Please let me know if this is of any help, and I'll see you next time.